chocolate isn't the answer, could you please repeat the question? Hello, this is Pat Coakley, and it's my monthly podcast called Pod Snacks Art of the Diet, and it's all about the fun of maintaining a significant weight loss. Now, we all know it's not all fun, but I try to make it fun because I've been doing it for 10 years, and I have the attention span of a mayfly, so I can never do things quite the same way. So I hope you join me. All of the past episodes are available on www.artofthediet.com. Hello, this is Pat Coakley. It is May 5th. I'm recording this Tuesday, 6 p.m., May 5th. And funny how time flies when you are in confinement. And I I really, I don't know what to say to you people. Uh... This, the day before yesterday was my worth, worst day of 60 days, or has it been 60 years? Time is just crazy. And I think I had the worst day because I didn't do anything creative at all. I didn't sew anything. I didn't read anything. I didn't write anything. And I clearly saw that my creative activities is sort of my dyke uh, against the oncoming onslaught of realizing this is not a temporary uh, world for me at my age. (laughs) It's probably going to last much longer for me. And I just really got it yesterday. So I'm recording this today and Good luck to y'all, <laughs> because my meditation's been interrupted also, and the newsletter that I do every week on patcoakley.com, one of my comments was, after some screed uh, that I had written, was, can you tell my meditation routine's been interrupted? And a couple of the subscribers <laughs> wrote back and said, oh yeah, we noticed. So let me just talk about a couple of things. Number one, doing a monthly podcast during a uh, pandemic is really not the best time frame. I noticed myself that any podcasts that are even weekly, it's not timely enough. It's the daily podcast that is giving me some help and some assistance. For example, not that I've used it in the last couple of days, but my meditation app started doing a daily live or a weekday live meditation with a meditation teacher at a certain time every day. And you didn't have to listen in on that first at time, uh, a particular time in the afternoon, you could then listen to it later on inside the app. And this is what really made a difference for me. I wanted to be listening to people who were going through the exact same thing I was going through. That helps me. All of these podcasts that had previously recorded interviews with people, prior to this, I just found that uh, while the content may have been great, it was great two months ago, it wasn't great now. So I am really aware that a monthly podcast is really stupid. So I am thinking about that, but I've gotten no further than thinking. But Some of the funny things that have happened this past month are summed up in sort of one or two sentences. One of them is, 
I shouldn't click on that brownie bowl recipe. Click. <laughs> In other words, what the hell am I doing clicking on a recipe for a brownie bowl? <laughs> I'm trying to maintain a 60 pound weight loss. I've done it for 10 years, 11 years. And now I'm going to start clicking on brownie bowl recipes. Just a regular brownie is not good enough. I have to have a brownie bowl. And I thought, well, well, my appetite is back. The first month of this, and those of you who know me, know that when I get really anxious, I lose my appetite. So I'm not a really good mentor for eating issues when I'm in that state because I lose my appetite and nothing seems to appeal to me. But after about four weeks, my nerves started to settle and my appetite returned. It was that clear. And so I've been fighting <laughs> the, the brownie bowl challenge, I call it. And I have been successful in this past month in fighting it, but not always. And uh, my latest thing is I saw a snickerdoodle sour cream bread loaf for pound cake. <laughs> and I laughed. I went, all right, brownie bowl out snickerdoodle sour cream pound cake in this is honestly for someone who has a weight issue and has had to deal with it all their life and only in the past 11 years have i been successful in dealing with it being in a pandemic poses some real challenges but i have to say working for me, and I think for anyone having to deal with the art of the diet during a pandemic, going to the store is such a pain in the ass that trips to the store just to get an ingredient to make the snickerdoodle sourdough, you know, um, bread, you just, I'm not doing it. Now, number one, I shouldn't even be going out to the store at my age and what they tell me. Massachusetts is still not out of the woods like some areas seem to be. Massachusetts most definitely is not. So because I live alone and family is not close to me, uh, I go shopping once a week. And that is it. I'm not popping down to that store and getting in my hazmat suit and uh, going around the store wondering whether I'm going to get the sour cream and the coronavirus at the same time. So it has really stopped my extra visits to a convenience store, to a grocery store, to pick up an ingredient or a bag of chips that I just have the yen for. I'm simply not doing it. So that is working in my favor. So I can click on these things. But if I don't have the ingredients, and as some of you know, some of the basic ingredients, like flour and stuff, aren't readily available. And while the first month I had not a problem at all. Um, the second month, as I'm going through my once a week uh, trip through the supermarket, I go, now if I get that flour, let's say they had it that week, what am I going to do with that flour? Am I going to make that brownie bowl? <laughs> Is that a good thing for me to do, Pat? And of course, the answer is no. And so I walk by the flower. And the interesting thing to me is that having that limitation 
also highlights that what I bring in the house is the real crux of weight maintenance. That was always true, even before the pandemic, but being hostage in your house where all you have are cupboards to go and check and look through and see if there's anything winking at you. If you bring it into the house, you absolutely know it's there. You've got nothing else to distract you. So I have really learned that um, if the moment seizes me, and one moment, one week, uh, I said, let me just get these uh, little popcorn things that I like and they no longer had the jar of uh, kernels. They just had three packets. And I said, okay, so my treat this week will be I'll, I'll have some popcorn. Well, a day later, all three were gone. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's really not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> I'm supposed to stretch it out. The first week... I could bring a bag of chips in the house and have really uh, some left in the small bag, in a small bag now, not a, a large bag, a snack bag, and I could still have some left five days later. That's what happens when my appetite goes. But when my appetite comes back, three uh, microwave popcorn go within a day and a half. And... Then I had the little, let me gift uh, somebody who's ill, some my chocolate sauce, and let me gift some homemade ice cream. And I'm noticing <laughs> that the gift of the ice cream isn't quite as much as I made in both the chocolate sauce instance as well as the ice cream. And I think, oh, this is very cute. Uh, I'm trying to pretend I'm gifting to others, but I'm giving to myself. So I've had the aha moments, as I'm sure we all have had, and appreciated that if I were not alone and that I, if I was in a family that was shopping one time a week, for an entire family, including multiple snacks and all, all those things, I would be in real trouble. So I am really grateful that I just have to wrangle with myself and not put the whole family on red alert that they had to hide their foods from me. Uh, it's not... Uh, it's just embarrassing to say, but really, truly, if you hide it and I don't know where it is, I give up after a point. But if I know where it is, it's going. And so I could readily see that if I were in a family, uh, there'd be many a discussion of someone saying, where are my chips? I, I just bought chips. <laughs> and they'd all go, it's Aunt Patty. She found them. But I don't have to deal with that. Um, I just have to deal with the reality of where we're at. And I'm really trying not to uh, focus in on that because it is so scary and so really depressing. Uh, so I've just been sewing up a storm. And I can't tell you, my worst day really was yesterday, and that was because I did not sew anything and didn't do anything else creative either. And it really makes a difference. It's for someone else who's maybe on medication for depression or anxiety, being creative is my medication. It helps me chill out, balance out, not obsess about things. So I can't recommend enough that if you're at your wit's end, just do something. Do something. 
I was, you know, sewing masks like so many sewers were doing and um, then started selling some masks. And I make a nice mask. There's no question. Some of them are made from fabric that I designed, so they're more expensive than others. But the bottom line is somebody ordered 10 of them. And instead of being delighted... I went, 10, 10 masks. I have to sew 10 masks. And I realized that my creativity goes in spurts. A production line, I'm not. So now I just have to realize, that's why I can't put some of these things up on Etsy because, you know, somebody on Etsy could maybe order four or five or whatever. You know, I'm not able to produce that. And so I don't do it. So it's just word of mouth or somebody contacting me because they've seen somebody else's. But it's been a real revelation to me this past month of having a product that people wanted and people were ordering. And I couldn't really keep up with the orders, which sounds... In this world, when people are struggling, it sounds like a good problem to have. But the bottom line was my whole equilibrium was thrown off by having so much work to do. And I just am not suited for it. It was like I was put in an anxiety machine um, having nothing to do with the coronavirus, but just having to do with oh my God, I have to do four more masks for this order and then I have to mail it. And, you know, I, I, I just couldn't do it. So the bottom line is, aren't we learning stuff about ourselves and about others? And not all of it is good. And I'm sort of tired of those people talking about their quarantine as a blessing. <laughs> I started out being one of them. I did. And uh, I'm not there anymore. I am not there anymore. This is not a blessing. And with 69,000 Americans dead, wow, I, uh, I cannot reconcile... Uh, where the joy in Mudville is outside of just detaching yourself from the world and going into your own world, which is where I go with my creativity. I have made so many cafe aprons from fabric I designed and fabric that I've purchased over the past year I decided I'm going to start to sell these, but it made me laugh because I saw this snickerdoodle sour cream bread recipe, and I said to myself, "Well, Pat, you've got the, you have got the apron to go in that kitchen and cook this recipe." Seriously, I have about ten different uh, cafe aprons. So that's how I get enjoyment by totally denying the world is as effed up as it is. I The only news I can listen to comes from Andrew Cuomo in New York or from Charlie Baker in Massachusetts, who are two leaders who seem to be able to deal with reality. I can't deal with anybody else. And so uh, I won't go there, but wowzer. Uh, anybody who deals with a weight problem has to deal with the facts. The numbers in that scale, we can try to argue with them and say they aren't what they are, or it was a bad day, or that battery is going down, or the humidity is high, or that Band-Aid that I had on my foot must have weighed two pounds. 
we can't do it and make any progress. We've been there, done that in terms of denial. So all I can say is I feel for you out there who are also struggling with a family that has a grocery list that includes things that simply are calling your name and the really the discipline it takes to control it is really formidable in a pandemic but the one thing going for you is if you limit the shopping and if you're able to say no to some things even though they're there and you could buy them it does strengthen a little bit your uh, reality and your ability to uh, enjoy what you enjoy but not to excess like I have made spaghetti squash practically every week of this eight weeks and different recipes and I've come across a barefoot Contessa one uh, that I just love and it involves the spaghetti squash but also putting uh, some apple juice in it while it cooks and then after it's cooked some parmesan cheese and some butter and then you put some mozzarella cheese over it then a little panko and then put it in the oven for 20 minutes now all of those ingredients are not necessary i could do just the squash uh with a little oil or with uh you know, a little mozzarella or a little parmesan. It doesn't have to be the breadcrumbs and the butter and the whatever. But by and large, I make it that way. And it's delicious. It makes me feel like I'm a normal person having a dinner. I just don't have a half a bowl of it. It's a portion control thing. And that I believe in. <laughs> I just do believe in portions. And that whatever you have, if your portion is sort of reasonable, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And I do like to hear myself saying that to myself. And so I say it to you too. You're going to be all right. We'll figure this out. But it's hard. And I feel sorry to my core that maybe some of you are dealing with more than just a weight problem right now with being unemployed or having a spouse unemployed or somebody ill and caregiving and whatnot. Uh, I can't imagine uh, how complicated. But I do know that if you've had a weight problem in your life and had to deal with it, I know you've got skills that some other people in quarantine do not have. And that is self-awareness and the ability to look in the mirror and go, you know what, I got to get real here. And honestly, it's a gift to yourself to tell yourself the truth. So that's it for May. I keep thinking I'm going to do something more. I don't know whether I'm going to. I do encourage you to go to patcoakley.com slash newsletter and sign up for it. It's weekly. And uh, most of the time it's entertaining. This one was a little on the angry side. But uh, hey... That's part of reality, too, isn't it? All right. Blessings to all of you. We are going to be all right. Wow.